<laughs> here's this guy who's, you know, says he's the savior of the world, he's the Messiah, and we know eventually he was, he saved the whole world, and he chooses his dream team. And who does he choose? He chooses a tax collector. Everybody hated tax collectors. <laughs> he chooses Simon Peter, this, this bombastic fisherman that you know, spoke before he thought and jumped before he looked. He, he, cho he chose these two guys named James and, and John. They called them the Sons of Thunder. You know, these are like jocks you know, with all brawn and no, no brains. You know? he, he chose a prolific doubter, Thomas. He chose Peter's little brother. Can you imagine being Peter's little brother, living in, living in that your, your entire life? I mean, imagine Jesus rolling up in Jerusalem. He's got this popular following of all these people. Nobody wants to hear the people, the priest in the temple preach. They want to hear Jesus preach. And he rolls in with this gang of people that, that he didn't get stuck with. He picked these people. I mean, he cared for these people he because did. Jesus was the God who became like men and, and women so that people could understand that their God cared for them. And Jesus sends a message through 2,000 years of history, and, and he says, I don't care how much sin you're at. I don't care if, you, if you're a prostitute on the street. I, I, don't, I don't care if you feel like you've got nothing to contribute. I, I don't care if you flunked out of rabbinical school, because some of those guys probably had. He said, I'm the Savior for you. I'm the Savior that has come for you.